You probably ask yourself what a weird Windows hotkey has to do with what makes a great hacking YouTube video. Well, I will try to make a point in this video and for that we first have to start exploring what is up with that weird Windows hotkey. This video is sponsored by Hextree.io. If you want to learn hacking with well-edited video courses, go check it out. Paul Thorod wrote on Twitter that if you type Control Shift Alt Windows and then L, LinkedIn will open up in your default browser. And this is apparently an operating system hotkey that cannot be turned off. I don't know where this suddenly appeared from, but suddenly there were also articles here, for example, from The Verge. Today I learned this weird Windows keyboard shortcut opens LinkedIn. And this article also included a list of other hotkeys that exist. They are all part of the Office uh, key. So there's a key combination to open LinkedIn, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and so forth. And while on regular keyboards it's like this weird combination of Control Shift Alt and Windows, there is actually a so-called office key on some like Microsoft keyboards. So you just have to press that key plus L or W and so forth. While the tweet mentioned that there is no way to turn it off, this article does link to a post where somebody explained how you can turn this behavior off. Now, personally, I don't really care about this hotkey. I don't really understand why people want to turn it off. I feel like it's just general mistrust in Microsoft and people not liking that the operating system does something that they didn't agree on or they didn't enable or so forth. But I mean, the operating system is full of stuff like this. However, the sentiment of I don't quite understand what the operating system is doing and that scares me, I can actually agree with that. Like I have a similar feeling. That's why I feel more comfortable with Linux because I have a little bit more of a feeling, not that it's controlled by an evil corporation or so, but that I feel like I have more control and understanding of how everything works. And so if you are one of the people that got like an uneasy feeling about a weird hotkey like this and you want to turn it off, actually use this feeling as a motivation to dig deeper and understand how it works. There's nothing scary about the hotkey, but there's lots to learn from this. And this is what John Hammond recognized as well. And this is now where we finally come to the part where I want to explain what makes a good YouTube video or a good hacking educational YouTube video. Because John Hammond actually made a video called The Mysterious Office Key. So what does this hotkey have to do with IT security or cybersecurity? Why would John Hammond being a cybersecurity educator, why would he make a video about that? Well, if you watch this video, it's not just like the Verge article just telling you about it. You can actually see him using process monitor to look at what happens when he presses the hotkey. And you can then watch him use that tool and navigate that tool, his thinking and methodology. And he noticed that when pressing this shortcut, the operating system appears to look into the registry and he saw that it tries to read a value from classes MS Office app shell open command. Now, in case you don't know Process Monitor, Process Monitor is like a monitoring tool for Windows that gives you real time information about if certain files are accessed, if certain programs are executed, or if registry files are accessed. It gives you a lot of information about what the system is uh, doing. And in his video, he was showing how we can use that tool to figure out what happens when you press that hotkey. But that's not all that John Hammond does. Check out this clip from his video. So if we wanted to, there are a couple things that we could play with in that array of different registry keys that we could modify as a low privilege whatever user. MS Office app here, and that doesn't have the shell open command sub keys, right? And then if we set a default value here, could we just toggle this to like calc or change it to any other executable or something that we want to run instead, and then try to hit that hotkey, um, and there we go. Oh, cool, now we can kind of run whatever we want here. So do you see his playful approach, like not being scared of the operating system, not being intimidated by it, but playful. You know, he saw that this registry value was read. So let's see, it does sound like you can execute some command. Let's enter a different command and let's see what happens. He enters calc.exe and when he presses one of these shortcuts, suddenly the calculator opens up. Now you probably clicked on this video because you were wondering about what makes a great hacking video. And well, this is kind of like my opinion, my summary of what constitutes a good video, and you can see it as an example in John Hammond's video. First of all, you need a great story, something to capture, to motivate the audience, the viewer to watch. And in this particular video case, the motivation was this weird Windows key. John Hammond saw that this was making its round on Twitter, maybe it was sent to him, and he thought that could be a cool motivating story. Selecting the right story can make all the difference of if it's 
going to be a very popular video or not. You, you maybe never know. In this case, maybe it was not a super popular topic, but I'm sure there were apparently some people that were confused about this key. And so if somebody for whatever reason has an emotional connection, maybe being annoyed that Windows does something weird, whatever the reason might be, some people might now be motivated to watch this video to learn more about this weird hotkey. And that's the hook. That's the story. So now you have figured out the story and that might motivate a person to watch. But what about the technical part? Generally, there are two ways how technical stuff can be taught. You can just tell people how it is, like John Hammond could have just said, well, here's the registry key and this is how you can modify it or change it. Like this is kind of like the old school teacher approach, just telling how it is. But the much more interesting part, something that I want to always do with my videos, and that's also what John Hammond is doing, and that's also why I think his channel belongs to the more popular channels, is that he's actually investigating. He has a methodology. There's like a scientific process. There's a playful approach to it. There's a let's try this and see what happens. And when we see that happens, let's play around with this. If you watch this video, pay attention to that. This is exactly what you can observe. He enters a command and then notices an error and then reacts to this error, makes assumptions about this error, adjusts and tests something else. So now the video is not just a story, but it also shows you the methodology of how professional work looks like. In this moment, you look a professional over the shoulder doing actual work. It's not just news and information dump, it's you are learning how to do the work yourself. And now on top of that comes the third component, and that is actually the tool itself. Maybe you didn't know about Process Monitor before, but now you see John Hammond using it. And by seeing how he uses it, you immediately develop an intuition how to use this tool yourself. You didn't have to watch any tutorial specific Pro process monitor. You didn't go into this video for process monitor. But if you were motivated by the story, you stayed for the investigation part, now accidentally you learned about process monitor and how to use it and what it is useful for. All within a weird YouTube video. And as I mentioned, that's something that I also try to do with my videos as well. The Game Boy hacking series, for example, which I collaborated on with Stack Smashing, is a good example for my videos for that. Because in this case, I'm using Pokemon as a hook. This is the story, investigating this childhood game. Lots of people have a nostalgia feeling about it. So that is a story that might hook the people and make it motivated. But then I'm not just telling you about a certain glitch or how something works. We are investigating it together. We are developing tools together to investigate the memory and play around with it. And so along this whole way, you can learn lots of stuff about low level programming and yeah, the game, how, how it works itself. All right. Now I told you about what I think makes a good YouTube video, but I do hope that you also see how this can be translated into other mediums. I do think these three components are very important for any technical be it blog post or also a talk. Having a story that hooks people, show the investigation, show the process, the methodology, how you moved forward your thinking. And then of course, part of it along the way you teach, you know, the hard technical facts, be it a tool or something else. But before we end this video, let's quickly cycle back again to the specific uh, shortcut example, because there was, as I mentioned in the Verge article, a way to disable this command. So let's look at how to disable this command. Well, this write-up says you have to run the following command as an administrator and look here what it does. It says registry add and then exactly the registry key that also John Hammond figured out. And then it sets the value to run DLL32. So here you can see the default registry which doesn't have this value and now you want to disable this hotkey. So see what happens. Now there is a run DLL32 entry. So do you know what that means? When you want to disable the command, you don't really disable the command. You just specify a program that really doesn't do anything instead. So when you press your hotkey, it's not disabled. You are actually executing run DLL32. So run DLL is actually a program where you can pass in a DLL name and then it will try to run that DLL. But if you have seen John Hammond's video and you see that actually when you execute a command uh, with the hotkey, then it actually passes an argument to that program. So run DLL is actually called with a string as a DLL name. It will attempt to run a DLL. Hmm, that is interesting, right? 
Well, I thought so too, but we are here on Live Underflow, which is full of low effort videos. This is not the main channel Live Overflow, so you are left to your own devices to figure out if that is a security issue or not. Well, to be completely honest with you, I just realized this literally right now during recording. I had not planned for this. If I had planned, I would have prepared and tested it out myself. But during recording, while revisiting this topic, I just realized that you actually probably call run DLL32 with this other parameter, and I have no clue what the implications of that are. So yeah, still interesting, I think. Remember that I collaborated with Stack Smashing on the Game Boy series? Well, we are also building together an online training platform to learn hacking. On Hextree.io, we are building courses around web hacking, but also reverse engineering and exploitation. We are still in the early phases. We are right now in the closed beta, but eventually we will open up. So you can go now on Hextree.io and put yourself into a waiting list. And if you watch this far into the future, then hopefully Hextree.io already launched. So go check it out.